Hi there, hello, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name's Angela, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rainbow Ange. You can also find an Instagram page and a Facebook page for my business, which is Yarn and Yarns, the same as the channel name. And I run a small bricks and mortar yarn shop in South Wales, just outside of Cardiff in the UK. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I feel a little, it's Monday afternoon, I've been at work this morning, uh, my day didn't go exactly as planned, so I'm feeling a bit discombobulated, so I probably shouldn't be recording a video because I don't know how coherent or cohesive this will be, but there, again, my videos are never usually <laughs> that coherent, so mm, no change there. But um, I have got plenty to chat to you about, so hopefully I can get through it. Uh, here on the channel you'll find me chatting about uh, knitting, crochet, spinning and sewing when I have that um, but today I have for you some knitting and some crochet. I've got a few finished objects and as always some works in progress. I will probably also put in a little bit of shop news at the end. Um, I try and keep that to the end. Um, I often chat about what's going on uh, in the shop, any new yarns that we have, um, anything that I think you might find interesting but I do try and leave that to the end. So if you aren't really interested in that, then you can easily skip over that if you want to. So yeah, I'm just gonna crack on and get on with it. I shall start with finished objects. And number one, I am wearing my Lee Tee, um, which is a pattern in this book. Um, so it is Mada um, Anthology 2, Simple Pleasures by Carrie Bostick Hogue. And if you have joined me before, you will remember the story of this particular garment, but sorry about that. <laughs> You're resting on my swivel chair and my cat just jumped up and swung you around. <laughs> uh, hopefully it didn't make you too seasick, but we might get a few of those because she's on the prowl. Anyway, back to uh, my finished garment. So the story of this, I found um, some yarn while I was having a sort out. Um, it's RY Classics yarn, which is basically a yarn line that Rowan Yarns bought out quite a few years ago now. Um, and I... When I took over the shop a couple of years ago, I had a big clear out, bought some stuff home. I've been slowly going through that yarn and um, adding it to sale baskets in the shop and also listing some on eBay. But the balls of this yarn were in a bit of a state, really. They had these um, parchment labels on that look uh, a bit like this. So as you can hear that sort of crinkly parchmenty sort of effect. They look really pretty. Um, but they just weren't effective at holding the yarn in a ball. So uh, most of the labels had come off and the yarn had started to sort of fall apart in the balls. It just didn't look very pretty. So I wasn't happy to either put it on sale in the shop or to list it on eBay. So I figured I'd try and make something with it. Um, it's a really nice um, sort of soft yarn. Uh, it's a blend of 57% wool, 10% cashmere, 33% acrylic. Um, and I had a search around on Ravelry and I found um, this pattern for the Lee top. And as luck would have it, I had the book in my collection. So I figured I would have a go with that. When I cast on, I cast on for a smaller size than I would usually make. Um, and also I didn't have quite enough yardage for that size. <laughs> so it was a bit of a gamble. I was making a top that I wasn't sure that was going to fit me um, in yarn that I didn't know if I had enough of, but it's worked out okay. Um, so as you can see, I am wearing the top today, so it fits. I haven't got it styled very well today. I've chucked it on over my tunic top um, that I was wearing today. So I've got these really baggy puff sleeves, but they're just sort of out of shot, so you can't really see them. <laughs> but I thought I'd just pop it on um, just to prove that it fits. Um, and I'm going to take it off in a minute because it's actually quite warm here today. And I'm up filming in my craft room again, which is in the attic of our house. So it gets really warm up here when the sun's out. There are a couple of things that I am um, 
Well, one thing that I am uncertain of and one thing that I'm slightly disappointed about in this garment. Um, so the, th the thing that I'm a little bit uncertain of at the moment is if you have watched before, you might remember that I had one ball of this purple um, contrast yarn that I used to build up the yardage a bit. So I cast on um, with that yarn and I've also cast off around the neck and also around the sleeves. Um, but I probably could have gotten away, um, certainly with the cast offs in the brown, I've got this much of the brown left, which is almost the full ball, not quite. Um, I think I would have been really tight if I hadn't done the little garter band at the bottom in that. I don't think I would have enough left in here to do the few rows front and back um, on that band, but I probably could have cast off. But I thought it would look quite nice to kind of echo that bottom trim um, around the neck and the sleeves. If the, the neck I just cast off, I didn't really think about it. The pattern just says cast off loosely. Um, so I cast off in normal straightforward manner. So um, knit two stitches, pass one over, knit the next one, pass one out, etc, etc. Um, that gives a really nice clean, I don't know if you can see that, uh, clean cast off edge, but there's not much stretch to it. So it's a little bit tight to get it on over my big old noggin. Um, and it's quite close. It's like kind of pulling up into my neck around there um, so I may end up ripping that out and doing a slightly stretchier cast off I've got a tiny little bit of the purple left um, so I think if I rip out what I have uh, rejoin this I probably would have enough to do a stretchy cast off however the stretchy cast off isn't quite as pretty um, in a minute I'll take it off and show I did a stretchier cast off around the sleeves because I really couldn't get those on after I'd finished. Um, so I'm kind of in two minds. I might wear this a couple of times and just see how much that neckline bothers me before I make a decision. Um, worst case scenario, um, as I say, I've got plenty of brown left, so I could just make the um, cast off around the neck in the brown, um, and then I can definitely make that nice and stretchy. The other thing that is a slight annoyance on this garment uh, is it is not finished to uh, the quality that I would usually like. So when I wound up the yarn for use, there were quite a few balls that had um, factory knots in. And because I, so I had quite a few little um, sort of half balls, quarter balls, and I really didn't want to waste any yarn because I wasn't sure. Um, as it turns out, I probably could have been a little bit more careful. Uh, but usually in a garment, I will try and hide the join somewhere. So if it's a knit flat garment, then obviously I'll join my yarn at the sides. Um, if it's a knit in the round, then usually I would try and join the yarn sort of under the arm or somewhere that's not going to be as obvious. Um, with this, uh, the joins are just here, there and everywhere. And I've tried to make them as neat as possible, but you can definitely see uh, some bits like where the yarn's joined and then I've sort of tried to pull it tight and weave in the ends. Uh, there's definitely some sort of messier um, bits. Like if you look over here, my stitches are relatively neat. And then if you look over this side, you can definitely see where some of the joins are. Um, so that's slightly frustrating, but there's nothing I can really do about that now. I'm certainly not gonna rip out the whole thing. Um, it fits quite nicely. Um, it's not got the massive amount of positive ease as um, shown in the pattern book, but there is a fair amount of ease um, in it. It's a nice cropped um, length. Let me just see, it's gonna be a bit difficult because obviously I can't go back any further because of the wall, but I'm just gonna kneel up to try and give you an idea um, of where this um, this comes. Okay, so I've pushed you a little bit further away. You can see it's a crop top. It sort of comes to my natural waist, which is, well, probably a little bit lower than my natural waist, um, but it hangs quite nicely, as you can see. Um, there's a fair amount of ease. Um, it's not too tight, which was my main concern. Um, you can see a little bit more um, some of the, what I mean about some of the um, kind of untidy joins in the yarn but um, I think it will be okay it's wearable um, obviously I won't wear it <laughs> over this particular tunic top it looks a bit ridiculous with this fabric kind of flaring out there but I'll probably put a long sleeve I've got a few long sleeve t-shirts so I think I'll probably wear it with a long sleeve t-shirt then just jeans or a pair of trousers um, and I think I will definitely get some wear out of this oh that's a bit better it's a bit warm uh, so yeah, I, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, as I say, I've got a, a nice wearable piece. Um, I think, just having a look, I think the back 
is actually a little bit neater in terms of the joins than the front so I might wear it back to front um, I definitely need to rip up rip out the cast off though um, because you can definitely see like the the join like the beginning and then the end of the row but if the garment is basically the same um, both sides so if I do decide to rip out that um, cast off then I could definitely flip the start of my round around and make the that's the back yeah actually having said that I think I'm going to do that because there's only really one join uh, or one obvious join on the back so I think I'm going to rip out that cast off yay so you've helped me make a decision I'm going to rip out the cast off and um, start my round the other way around and make what is the back the front because they are essentially the same and I think that will neaten things up um, yeah so yeah I'll just show you uh, quickly while I've taken it off so that is the cast off around the neck so as you can see hopefully you can see that's fairly neat um, I did uh, a slightly stretchier cast off around the sleeves which what is the knit two stitches slip them back onto the working needle and knit them through the back loop knit one more slip those back blah, 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 etc etc um, but that cast off isn't quite so neat um, but as you can see you get much bigger stitches so that gives uh, definitely more room uh, and more stretch than at the top here uh, where there's not really any stretch at all so yeah Leety all finished um, well bar my decision to quickly change that cast off round um, but I'm quite pleased I've got a nice uh, usable wearable garment out of yarn um, that would otherwise just have languished and that was such a quick knit um, I think I probably spent maybe four or five evenings maximum um, and I had a finished garment so uh, <laughs> I do I'm, I'm chuckling at myself because uh, the cash off soft is a chunky yarn and um, I've had quite a few customers come into the shop over the last couple of weeks uh, the weather started to cool down um, and people are obviously coming back to knitting I've seen quite a few people that I haven't seen for a little while a few people have come in and said they want nice cozy garments uh, but they don't want to make them in chunky yarn because they don't want to add extra bulk to themselves and you know I am not small I don't think I look horrendous in this maybe I do <laughs> You can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I'm certainly of the opinion of no matter how big, small, tall, short, wide, skinny you are, wear well, whatever you like, whatever makes you happy. Um, and this is certainly going to be so nice and cozy, so I don't care. Stuff it. Chunky garments all the way. <laughs> okay. So um, on to the next finished object. I think I've spoken at uh, length enough about that one. Um, I was knitting on a pair of socks last week. I didn't actually show them here on the video because I'd left them downstairs or at the shop or somewhere. Um, and But I did stick in a picture, but the socks that I'm knitting as a commission for a customer are now finished. Um, so these are knit from Stylecraft yarns in Stylecraft head over heels boho and this is the Neva or Never colorway uh, N-E-V-A and um, I knit uh, this yarn before while we were on our trip to New Zealand earlier in the year um, so it was a nice um, kind of nostalgic knit for me um, although you know I love knitting socks and I do like knitting uh, socks for other people because I own plenty of pairs myself uh, so I if people want socks I'm always happy um, to put a pair on the needles but the downside of that is sometimes they already choose they choose colours that I've already knit with uh, but in this case it was kind of a pleasure to re-knit this colourway um, so I did my usual top down sock 2.25 millimeter needle I cast on 64 stitches uh, I've got 12 rounds of 2x2 two two rib uh, 50 rounds for the leg um, I think 65 rounds for the foot uh, wedge toe afterthought heel um, so the only these match up pretty well um, the only differences are obviously the heels I didn't bother matching those up and also I didn't quite finish on the same point and I find that often no matter how hard I try to start in the same um, place 
um, sometimes, and I guess maybe it's just a feature of these sort of patterning and striping yarns, you may get one or two extra rows um, in various colours as you go down. Uh, like for instance, on this sock, that blue stripe there, um, to my eye, you probably can't really see it on the camera, looks a row or two bigger than the um, one on the back. So that obviously knocks things out as you go um, down. So this one ended um, on a little bit of a black and white. Uh, it's got a little bit of a black and white nobble on the end there. And this one obviously stuck to the yellow. But uh, apart from that, they're pretty well matched. So um, hopefully my customer will enjoy wearing those. I can give those to her now that I have shown them off on the video. I have got, this is my bag of stuff to show you. <laughs> I'll try not to spend too long, um, but I'm just going to have a route through because I have one more finished thing to show you. Uh, if I can find it, there we go. It's a small little thing. So um, I showed this off on Instagram, uh, but I forgot to talk about it on the video last week. Um, so I have a group who come to the shop once a month on a Saturday afternoon and uh, they're knitters, crocheters, crafters. They do all sorts. Um, but they have decided to um, try and spice their little group up a bit um, by setting monthly challenges and um, they asked me to choose a challenge for the first month and I um, asked everyone to make a, a brooch or a pin um, and they could use whatever technique or um, whatever that they they fancied and um, I should have actually put them all on the table and taken a picture I might try and do that next month um, just to show the array of different sort of techniques um, that people had used. Uh, but we've got lots of beautiful brooches and for my attempt I had a go at knitting with wire. Um, so this is the little, it's going to be a bit difficult to show you. So uh, I had a go at knitting with wire. So this is a 28 gauge I think craft wire um, which I threaded up with some beads and just cast on and knit. It was a bit of a strange experience um, but obviously this is a, like a really small piece so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to try something new and um, after the first row or two it was absolutely fine. Um, I started off with these little seed beads which you can see sort of in the background and um, they were the ones that I threaded onto the wire and knit in and when I finished it the beads didn't really stand out that much um, so I had a chat with one of my customers who is a fantastic bead worker and um, she does fantastic knotting as well she's actually a published author in that field um, and I asked her for some suggestions and she thought or she came up with the idea that I could perhaps um, thread some bigger beads onto a piece of wire and then just wrap them into the piece that I'd already knitted which I did and I'm much much happier with that result because I think uh, those beads really stand out and they actually bring out some of those little background beads as well. Um, the only other thing that I did, uh, because obviously that's uh, very transparent see-through, um, I just wrapped the um, brooch back um, in wire, I'm not going to be able to see that, um, before I attached it to the brooch itself. Sorry my camera's not, I'm just using my phone so the focus is no good at all. Um, but I didn't want that to be just one solid metal bar um, that you could see through so wrapping that in wire has helped you can st still see it's there but I think it has helped to uh, make that blend in um, just a little bit more than it otherwise would have and it looks really nice actually against the plain colour um, so obviously it shows up quite well against black uh, but it shows up quite nicely against white too. So yeah, that was a fun little experiment. Um, I could definitely see myself, um, you know, experimenting with that sort of technique again. Um, it is pretty tough on the hands though. Obviously, wire, um, this craft wire is quite thin, um, but it's not flexible like uh, wool yarn. Um, so yeah, I, I could imagine it would be very painful on the wrists if you do anything. Um, on, a, on a larger scale. Okay, so that is it for my finished object on two works in progress. So uh, I think I shall start with a little crochet segment. I've got one crochet work in progress to show you and one, I keep moving, sorry, my face is getting bigger and smaller depending on 
uh, where I sit. I apologise for that. <laughs> um, crochet, 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 stay on topic. Uh, so one work in progress and another languishing whip um, that I'm going to talk to you about briefly in the hopes that it will inspire me to make a bit more progress on it. Um, so first off, I this is my work in progress. It's a bit of a uh, mess at the moment <laughs> because I've got bits pinned to it, bits sewn to it. Um, so I'm in the process of um, making a really simple <laughs> uh, autumn wreath, uh, which is going to be part of our window display. Uh, so last year, um, when I did my autumn window display, one of my customers bought in a magazine and said, oh look, there's an autumn wreath in here, you could make this for your window. And obviously we were already in autumn, there was no time to prep for it, so I never actually got round to it. Um, but I'm going to show you, my wreath is not going to be the same as this one, because uh, this one is made up of lots of bits and pieces. Um, so instead, my wreath is going to be inspired by this, it's not going to look anywhere near as pretty as this one. Um, but I'm definitely going to make these mushrooms and the little hedgehogs. Uh, but as you can see, I am cheating slightly in terms of the leaves. I have got some bigger leaves. Um, some of these I've made, some of them uh, customers have donated. Um, I'm not sure yet if I will entirely fill out uh, this. Uh, obviously I've covered um, a polystyrene ring. I just did uh, a whole bunch of double crochets or single crochets if you're in the US. Um, I used one ball of chunky yarn um, that we had. It was actually the last in this lovely um, sort of deep red colorway big enough to cover the ring <laughs> it's ridiculous all these bits just keep dangling and falling but you get the idea um so yeah leaves and then I'm gonna add um some little hedgehogs and some mushrooms and just see what it looks like I could end up um covering the rest of the ring um with other leaves and bits but I've got plenty left um I got don't i pulled out the leaves that we made last year for last year's autumn window display and then another group also donate, donated a whole bunch so um, I've actually put tons in the window and I've still got some left over so um, I think I've got plenty to fill out that ring if needs be. For anyone who is interested uh, the wreath that I showed is in Love Crochet magazine. Let me have a look to see if I can find the issue for you. Uh, October 2017. The pattern is by Liz Ward. It's called In the Forest. So yeah, as I say, my wreath is going to be loosely inspired by that. Okay, the next crochet project is a blanket that has been on my hook for quite some time. I started it, I don't know, probably two three years maybe <laughs> ago and it's from this book of crochet throws and wraps which is by Melody Griffiths and I am making the Navajo blanket uh, which is this lovely blanket there now when I started the blanket I didn't read the instructions fully and I didn't realize that you crochet um these sort of bits in squares and then you sew it all together which is a bit of a bind I much prefer stuff weight that you crochet together it's just so much quicker and less fiddly and also the squares uh, in the blanket end up with this sort of ridged um, edge so it's actually quite a pain to sew it together and make it look neat um, but this is my progress so far and this has been languishing in the basket for quite some time but I've got a fair way through it. Um, I decided to go with the same colours that were in the book. I just really like that colour combination. Um, I have actually, I think I made enough. Uh, so the blanket's not actually that big in the book, as you can see, it's sort of hanging off her shoulder there. Um, so I think I made enough to the point where I could have started squaring out these corners. Um, but of course I decided I wanted to make my blanket bigger. So yeah <laughs> I carried on and I thought oh I'll add a few more rounds and then square it out and then I lost steam with it mostly because of the sewing up um so the squares are quite small as you can see um they're also a little bit of a pain you do like a triangle uh, and then you join in the yarn and do another triangle on the other side so 
uh, it's yeah a little bit of a faff for, for what it is but I think it, it does look quite striking um, once you get them sort of together so um, but I am thinking about finishing this blanket and actually oh, I don't know now I'm looking at it I really yeah uh, it's reminded me why I've chosen this pattern and why I wanted to do it but I'm contemplating finishing it and giving it away as a Christmas gift um, so yeah I'm hoping now that I've shown that to you um, I shall be inspired to work on it again who knows it's made from Starcraft um, special Aran so it's their basic 100% acrylic yarn. Um, you can see how old it is because Stylecraft have changed their ball bands now. So <laughs> uh, this colorway is just called dark brown. Uh, 10, 0, 4, 1, 0, 0, 4. And then I've got fuchsia, which is two, three, four, four. And then there is a blue. Don't have the label for the blue. And this is parchment. And a cream and it's made on a six millimeter hook um, so this little basket that all, all the yarn is in has been living in the corner of my craft room for ages I've got some of these little triangles that I've already made that obviously need um, the second colorway added to them this yarn actually is not a style craft uh, special Aaron this is a ball of Hayfield I think looking at it it's got like a Tweedy effect to it and um, I use this to make a blanket for my sister-in-law um, which makes me think actually I shouldn't really extend that much bigger perhaps I'll change my plan and stop there because I've only got this yarn left although the blue is probably the least used color uh, the rest I can obviously reorder and um, if the dye lots are different I don't think it's going to matter uh, because of the way the blanket's constructed uh, I don't think you'll see huge amounts of difference oh this purple's actually life Aaron not the special Aaron so the future two three four four is life I'm hoping that now I have shown that to you again it might inspire me to get going on that one again but we'll see Okay, so on to the rest of my works in progress, and these are all knitting. So first off, I have got, what shall I show you first? I'm just going to pull out all the bags from the bag. <laughs> Go through one by one. Okay. Um, because I finished those boho socks, um, I have another couple of pairs of commission socks waiting in the wings. So yesterday I cast on um, one of those um, pairs of socks. I had thought that maybe I would go to the cinema this afternoon, so I wanted a pair of socks to knit in the cinema. Um, but I decided to come home instead and record this video. I also was in the shop a little bit longer than anticipated and I've got some project bags to finish sewing. So once I have finished talking to you, I'm gonna hop on the sewing machine. So I didn't make it to the cinema, um, but never mind. I am almost glad that I didn't because I have cast on um, in some lovely yarn by Miranda May. This is her spring awakening color and it's an 85% extra fine merino superwash 15% nylon and it's knitting up absolutely beautifully um if these weren't too big for me I would have real trouble I think I'm gonna have real trouble giving these away anyway look at those gorgeous gorgeous um speckles of color um in this yarn so I'm glad I'm not knitting these in the dark because I want the pleasure of seeing all of these yummy pops of color um so yeah it's really fun as you can see on my stitches here you get like one or two stitches uh, in a variety of really fun colours um, and I'm really loving there's a really really sort of bright uh, neon green there we are that pops in every now and then and I love it when that comes up that just makes me smile. Um, so yeah I'm I'm a little bit sad that I don't have any more of this in the shop. Um, if you've watched for a while, you know that we stock uh, Miranda's yarn, um, but I don't have any more skeins of Spring Awakening le left, which is probably a good thing because I might be tempted to snaffle one for myself. So this is the yarn uh, when it's all caked up. 
and uh, not much progress yet on that um, but I don't think it will be too long before these come flying off the needles because I'm really enjoying knitting on those. So that is my first work in progress. Second work in progress is uh, another commission knit and I showed this uh, last week. So I'm knitting an Esme shawl um, which is a pattern um, by Sarah Hatton for West Yorkshire spinners and I've knit a couple of these before. Um, I had hoped to have this off the needles because it's been hanging around for a few weeks now. Um, I did manage to put a pretty good dent on it um, on Saturday. It was a really rainy day here on Saturday. Um, I didn't go in the shop, I stayed at home to do a few things, uh, but in the afternoon I just sat and knit. Um, I think when I showed last week I didn't put a marker in, but I think I was still on this section where you do the sort of coloured eyelet stripes, and as you can see I am now way past that. Um, so this scarf is getting skinnier and skinnier, the rows sort of decrease as you go along. Um, so it's definitely um, very close to being finished so if I just pop it on um yeah it's a bit awkward to pop on I've got the needle <laughs> hanging off here so it definitely wraps around nicely um so I don't think it will be too much uh longer to go before this is finished so with any luck I will <laughs> tangling myself up in the yarn. Um, I will be able to get this off the needles this evening. Um, I'm knitting this in the West Yorkshire Spinners uh, Gems yarn, um, which is 100% Wensleydale. And the gray is Moonstone and the purple is Amethyst. Um, the pattern calls for two balls of the Moonstone, one ball of the Amethyst. You have plenty left over of the contrast color um, and I usually use, I've made two of these previously, I usually actually use one and a half balls of the Moonstone. Um, the pattern continues on this sort of grey bit until you're down to only a few stitches. Um, one of my customers made this to pattern and it is so long and it gets really skinny at the end. Um, I just decided to adapt the pattern when I made the first one of these. Um, for the lady that's commissioned these and she's absolutely fine with the length um so uh, yeah i use about one and a half um i say balls they're skeins one and a half hanks skeins balls who cares <laughs> Uh, of these so this is um, obviously my second ball of moonstone um i'm going to take this down and weigh it and just keep going i think i'll just wind off 50 grams and then just keep going until i've got none left so that is the Esme shawl. I haven't really shown you any project bags, have I? They're not they're made by me, so they're not that exciting. Uh, so the Spring Awakening socks are living in my spooky gothic um, project bag that I made a year or two ago. Um, I know spring and Halloween don't necessarily mix, but uh, there's some of those, you know, kind of neon-y colours, which could be Halloween-y as well as springy. And um, I want to get some use out of this bag before uh, the season disappears. And the Esme shawl is living in my seagulls and oyster catches bag. Okay, uh, next work in progress, I've got another sock. Uh, this is my Lepus Love sock, which I showed you last week. I'm test knitting these for Kyla of Arctos Knits. And I think last week, uh, or last time I showed, whether it was last week or the week before, I had to just finish the lovely um, colour work portion of these socks, which are a couple of rabbits with a lovely heart in the middle. Um, so I've knit down the leg now. I have just popped in the little colour work portion um, just before the toe. So I've now just got to put the toe in. Um, once I've done this, they're quite a short sock, as you can see, uh, that's the sort of leg, so it's not too... Um, too tall. Uh, the pattern's easily adaptable. Uh, Kyla encourages you to have a play around with it in her pattern notes. Um, hopefully this will be released on Ravelry soon um, but I am due to feedback to her before the end of the month so um, I'll get this toe done over the next day or two and then I'll be able to, I don't need to knit both the socks to provide her with the feedback uh, on the pattern so um, but uh, they're quite, this, this bit really flies. Um, so if I can get through the colour work portion of the second sock, uh, there's no reason that I can't have both the, the, an actual pair uh, by the end of the month. Uh, the yarns I'm using are, the blue is a lovely yarn from um, 
Coop Knits socks, yeah. And the colourway is Topaz 113. And this is West Yorkshire Spinners um, in, I think, the Butterscotch colourway. I promised I would look that up and let you know for sure, but I haven't done that because I am terrible. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> and that's living in my lovely um drawstring uh sloths bag can you see those cute little cute little sloppies uh, and i purchased that at the york makery when we were on our travels a couple of weeks ago two more projects to show you um i've been working on quite a lot this week the first one is uh, a project that i haven't worked on for ages i'm really excited to be back working on this it's the chances wrap which is a pattern by charlotte borry um, available for purchase and download on Ravelry. Um, it's lots and lots of brioche loveliness um, and there's lots of different types of brioche. There's two colour brioche, one colour brioche, um, stocking at brioche, yeah. Uh, so the pattern calls for four colours but you can really do as many as you like and here is my wrap there's lots of ends um hanging off it so you have to um ignore that for the time being uh, but i've gone for kind of a grello um sort of color scheme oops in my wrap so i picked this up again last week and i did there we go um i put in a little octopus marker for where i was when i picked this up um so as you can see i have knit a reasonable amount um it is a wedge uh i'm, I'm coming to the center of the um wrap now um so you work in a lot of short rows uh, to get these um sort of shapes so uh, it looks like i've done a massive amount from that end but if i hold it up that way it's kind of a triangle you can see where the colors that i've added in have gone to uh, so yeah i'm really really enjoying working on that again i have got four yarns in this and i will go through them as i haven't shown this project uh, on the videos for quite some time um so first off i have got two yarns from the lovely helen who is ian tan tethery yarns and you can find her on etsy or oh, her uh, be warned um you will not be able to resist her yarns are absolutely beautiful I've got two of her yarns in this project. The yellow, I believe, is called Cornstalk. Yeah, Cornstalk. And that is on her Pedero base, which is 75 Superwash Merino, 25 Nylon, um, 425 metres for 100 grams. Um, so nice, generous yardage. Uh, beautiful yellow with sort of shots of mustard and almost down to sort of some creamy tones in that one and then this one is on her acker base which is a tweed base and this is the pavement colorway and i wound this up to use on my at dawn shawl and i never ended up using it um in the end so um i'm kind of glad because it was working really nicely um in this shawl and it's lots of uh grays so really light it, it's sort of showing as cream on the camera but that's a really sort of light pale gray um through to sort of dark dark grays there and um sort of scattered throughout are these lovely sort of tweedy flecks which i think you can just about see then i also have in this bag a skein of countess of blaze and this is the countess of mohair sock yarn which is 55 merino, 25 nylon, 20% kid mohair. Uh, it's a light um, four ply, so 100 grams, 500 meters. And this is part of her um, exclusive Odyssey Trail um, yarns that she did uh, a few years ago now. And the colorway is called Dark Clouded Son of Kronos. Um, so yeah, it was basically um, lots of yarns um, inspired by um, the Odyssey by Homer. And it's got these beautiful blue um, tones in this yarn and also a lot of the grey. So obviously the grey um, sort of picks up nicely um, on the um, Yantan Tetherer. So they sort of go together. And then the blue portions um, mix in with the final yarn. And actually this last yarn was the one that started me off. This was the kind of inspiration for the whole colour palette. Um, this is a Cauldron of Colours yarn and it is 75 superwash merino 25% nylon this is high twist 
um, 100 grams, 365 meters. And this is the Blue Boar colorway. This was sent to me by my friend Erin. And I believe the Blue Boar is something to do with Agatha Christie's Miss Marple. Um, maybe like the public house or something like that in some of her, the novels involving Miss Marple. Erin, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't shout at me, but I have never read an Ag Agatha Christie book. <laughs> never. I know, I need to rectify that, don't I? Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful yarn. Um, it's got yellows and oranges and blues and creams. Um, so this was what inspired me um, to build a colour palette um, around to um, make the chances wrap. And I'm really pleased uh, with how the yarns are all playing together and how this is coming out. Okay, on to final works in progress, uh, which you'll probably be pleased. I'm sure you're fed up of hearing me waffle on. And this is a cheeky new cast on. Um, so I have decided in my infinite wisdom slash insanity um, that I would like to knit James another sweater for uh, hopefully a gift for Christmas. The pattern I am making this time is the Beagle sweater um, and it's by Nora Gorn I think. I haven't printed out the whole pattern. Um, it's a Barocco pattern and it's designed in their Barocco vintage yarn but I am using uh, Rowan felted tweed Aran and I'm using colour 745 which is the ultra away I believe and I cast this on yesterday um, I bought home one ball of the yarn because I wanted him to let me know whether he liked the colour um, he last year he asked me for a blue sweater and I made him like a charcoal grey sweater so when I asked him this year he said yes I still want a blue sweater <laughs> so here is my progress uh, I sat and cast this on yesterday Sorry, rudely interrupted by a phone call there um, so yeah I knit the first 50 gram ball yesterday um it's a lovely um sort of ribbed pattern uh with a texture panel and then there's sort of um panels of plain stockinette stitch uh, at the edges and in between the two textured panels so um i'm really pleased with how it's working up in this lovely yarn which is a nice blue color um, and it's a, obviously the felted tweed tweed aaron it's got little flecks of orange which are probably aren't going to show up too well on the screen mm, I can't really find a place where there's one there that I don't think that's really showing up well but um yeah it's a really oh, there you go look you can see more of the orangey effect that little section on the back there um so yeah I'm really pleased with how that's knitting up um he said that he likes it so far so there's quite a big jump in the pattern sizes I don't have the page printed out with the sizing on um but I think James is a 42 chest usually and last year when I knit the Derby I knit the, that corresponding size but because I'm a slightly loose knitter I am coming to realize it actually turned out um, a little bit bigger than that um, the sizing on this um, there's quite a big sort of gap between the sizes I think there was a 44 inch or a 39 something like that um, I cast on I cast on for the bigger size like the 44 inch and it was just looking really big so I ripped that back and I've gone for the 38 or 39 whatever um, size so the slightly smaller size because um, I'm thinking obviously um, being a slightly looser knitter anyway I never bothered to do a gauge swatch I know I am wicked awful don't do as I do do as I say gauge people really important um, so I figured because the pattern has quite a lot of rib in it, um, I would just go for the smaller size and it seems to be working out quite well. I think there's still going to be um, a fair amount of um, ease in that for him. Um, and if it ends up being too big, well, I'm sure it will fit me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was one 50 gram ball. So obviously I have got a long way to go. Um, my markers are just denoting now where the um, sort of patterned panel is. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, obviously, these rib bits are really easy. It's just within this texture panel where the rows um, change slightly. But it's a four row repeat, so it's not that difficult to remember. I could kick myself because I meant to bring some more of this home so I could do a bit more on this this evening. Um, but I completely forgot. Um, so I need to do 
grab the rest of that from the shop when I remember. So that is the Beagle by Nora Gorn, Nora Vaughan, I've forgotten, doesn't say on my pattern, I said it earlier okay I think. <laughs> Okay, this is getting very shambolic now, so I'm definitely going to sign off. And um, here follows, hopefully, uh, a little section of me from the shop before I sign off for good this week. So I know I promised some shop talk at the end of this video, but the week has just disappeared and I haven't had the time, or really the inclination, to um, chat to you from the shop. So I'll save that for next week instead. It's an absolutely gorgeous day here. Actually, it's been a really nice week here in South Wales this week. So I am going to leave you with a little bit of beach footage instead. And I'm sure that's going to be much nicer than shop talk anyway. <laughs> so until next time, great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now. <laughs>